to this, the second in my series of guitar lessons for complete beginners. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about the notes which are used in music, where you can find them on the guitar, and how they're useful for tuning your guitar. The musical alphabet runs from A to G. Once you get to G, there's no H. Instead, it goes back to A again. So that gives you a total of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, back to A. And they call those eight notes from A to A an octave. If you were to keep going after that, then you just start going through the alphabet again. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The distance between uh, one A and the next, as I said, was an octave. If you were to go to an A beyond that, that would be two octaves, or you can go three octaves. Another way to think of these notes is to visualise a piano keyboard. This musical alphabet represents all the white keys on the keyboard. In between each pair of alphabetical notes is another single note. That note you can either call a sharp or you can call it a flat. Think of a piano again. These would be the black keys on the piano. And if you were to look closer at a piano keyboard, you would notice that this pattern isn't always the case. Um, so for between the notes B and C, there is no black key, and between the notes E and F, there is no black key. Before we look at where you can find these notes on the guitar, let's have a little look at the piano keyboard and see how the notes are laid out there. So here you can see the piano keyboard consisting of white alphabetical keys and black keys, which are the sharps and flats. Uh, let's have a look to start with at the first black key. You'll notice that has two names. You can either call it C sharp and think of it as being slightly higher than C, or you can call it D flat and think of it as being slightly lower than D. All the notes from one octave to the next, including all the sharps and flats, is called the chromatic scale. Each string on the guitar is tuned to a specific point along this chromatic scale. I have circled on the diagram of the keyboard so you can see which notes correspond to which strings. The distance between each key is what you would call a semitone. Uh, the, the notes on the guitar neck also move up fret by fret, a semitone each fret. Each string on the guitar is tuned to a specific point along this chromatic scale. So the thick string at the, at the top of the guitar here, the one nearest, uh, nearest my face, is E. Then you've got A, D, G, B, E. Or, here's a way to remember it, Eddie ate dynamite, good by Eddie. Then each string is divided up by these metal strips you can see here, these frets. And at each fret you have another note along that chromatic scale. You can think of each string as a different starting point along that chromatic scale. So, let's look at the easiest one to start with, the A string. This will be the note A. However, if you press the A string down at the first fret, then you have the note A sharp, or you can call it B flat. Then you've got the note B, and then, would you know what this note is? It's a C. Remember, there's no B sharp and there's no C flat. The next note? C sharp or D flat. Then you've got D. D sharp or E flat. E. F. F sharp or G flat. G. G sharp or A flat. A. So you can see along this A string, actually, you, you have a range from the open string 
to the 12th fret, you've got one octave. It's the same for each of the strings. If you were to pick a different string, say let's, let's pick the E string, it's just, it's just a different starting point on that chromatic scale. So uh, here's the note E, the next note would be F, then F sharp, what would the next note be? G. G sharp, or A flat, you can also call it, A, etc. You can keep going on that string. Just as a way of checking you've understood that, uh, see if you can find the note F along this D string here. Which fret would that be at? Well, let's have a look. You've got D, D sharp or E flat, E, F. It's there on the third fret of the D string. That's the note F. So just to complete this lesson, um, we're now going to go to a diagram of the guitar neck where I've labelled every single note from the open string up to the 12th fret. You do have notes after the 12th fret as well. We're not really going to be focusing on those. Um, they just continue beyond the octave. So, um, as I say, on the A string, you've got to A again when you get to the 12th fret. The next one would be A sharp or B flat, B, C, etc. As far as you could go. So here you can see a diagram of the guitar neck with the thickest E string nearer the bottom of the page and the thinnest E string nearer the top of the page. Um, you'll notice I've labelled all the alphabetical notes in blue and all the sharps and flats in yellow. Then I've marked a whole octave range uh, on each string. So there you have all the notes on each string from the open to the twelfth fret. Next, how to use an electric tuner. Before you play your guitar, you're going to have to tune it. Um, now you can do this by ear, um, using a piano or you can get tuning forks or pitch pipes. I don't think these are around so much nowadays, but you can get those. Or you can tune to a, the internet or a CD or something that, like that. But I've always, well I found, I've always found that I, I found to start with, tuning by ear was quite tricky. Um, so the best thing I would suggest to start with is to use an electronic tuner just while your ear is developing. Um, and I'll do a separate video on how you can tune by ear so that you can try that too. But just to start with, have a go at using an electric tuner. Um, basically you can get clip-on ones for your guitar. That's probably your best bet. Otherwise there are many free apps you can get. I would suggest clear tune for the Apple stuff or uh, G-strings for the uh, Android type of things. So um, I'm just going to switch now to a little video of my iPad screen so that you can see uh, how a typical electronic tuner works. Okay so this is a video of a guitar tuner you can get on an iPad or you can get it on an iPhone it's called Clear Tune uh, there's also one for Android, which actually I prefer, called G Strings. Um, basically, you can see it sort of flickering around all over the place as I speak. There's a microphone in there which is picking up the sound, and it's able to tell which note it can hear. So if I play the E string on the guitar, this one here, you'll notice that the dial starts moving back and forth. The dial will move back and forth throughout that scale which I talked about earlier, the chromatic scale. So it will show up all the notes, basically. Uh, so if you pick the E string to start with, You might have noticed there it was sort of uh, stopping just between E flat and E.
basically you want to tighten that string until the dial stops on E. In terms of which way do you turn the, the peg up here, these are the tuning, tuning, well they're called the machine heads actually, or the tuners, uh, to tighten the string or to raise the pitch, turn the peg away from you, that way. To loosen the pitch, to lower the pitch, sorry, you loosen the string by turning it back towards you. So loosening that way, tightening that way. And that affects the needle down here. There you go. So when it goes onto the green and the uh, arrow is directly above the E, you know you've got it exactly right. So I'll move on to the A string now. So what you will have noticed there is that the needle was just a bit further to the right of the A. That means that the string is too sharp or too tight, so you need to just loosen the string a little bit. Again, until the needle is directly above the note. So basically, you just need to go through and do that for each of your strings. There we go. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you enjoyed the lesson, then do click like at the bottom or subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave uh, them in the comments bo box below and I'll get back to you. Uh, otherwise, you can contact me for a free Skype lesson. Uh, in any case, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.